Hello fishing freaks. Welcome to the vlog that's in progress right now. This is a very windy day that we have here. This is going to be an interesting day because we're going on a river that I've never been on. I'm gonna literally walk down here to the to the edge right now and see what's going on. It's like a lot of a lot of trash going in it. Looks like a lot of uh, a lot of stumps that are out there in the middle. Looks like it could be a kind of a, a hazardous river to run. And we're down here deep in the heart of Texas, down where I live. So I thought it'd be interesting to to come fish this river that I live really close to that I've never been in. And we're going out with my buddy Hayden, who's fished out here a few times. Hayden, what's up? What do you got on this place, man? Uh, we're just out here at the river. We're going to just pull into some of the little uh, cuts off the main river channel and just mostly be flipping shallow, trying to catch some fish, mostly along the bank. Let's back this bad boy in and get to bassing on the river. Endangered outlaw. I like that. <laughs> Endangered outlaw. Let's pull right up to the mud bank. Probably going to throw on a spinnerbait. Um, and I definitely want to fish a jig today. I just want to settle in with a jig and get some jig bites. As with most rivers, sunny days are usually pretty good. Positions those fish under the shade, underneath trees, docks, timber, things like that. So we got a bright bluebird day, windy conditions. This would probably be tougher on a, uh, on a, on a typical reservoir, but since we got a river, Got Ocean Spoon Girl's hair in my face. We're definitely fishing post front conditions, but I think because we're on a river, we got moving water, I think it's gonna make it better. Looks like the first spot we're going into is a uh, backwater slough, an oxbow. I'm gonna put the uh, spinner bait on. This is a, uh, a little compact half ounce with two Indiana blades on it to give it some extra thump in this muddy water. Seeing a lot of bait fish flicking around. I was thinking they might want something that looks like a little bait fish. Plus there was some dead shad at the boat ramp. It's always, there he is, first cast. I mean, sometimes you just gotta, oh, it's a white bass. White bass. The white bass. Well, he definitely wanted that. Man, the white bass have been, they've been coming into my life lately. Better watch out, I'll take you home. Fry you up. New zone. Got some docks back here, real shallow cover and stuff. I'm gonna throw this crankbait around, see if I can catch one of these suspended fish. Oh, got him right there. Oh my gosh, it was a good one too, man. I'm not kidding you. It, it hit it right on the end of that dock. I'm down here looking for secret lures. Dude, I mean, just bonk, and he was going. Not sure. Felt a little, uh, felt a little scrungy, if that's a word. Well, there's a stocky bass. Oh, we got, I got him on the outside too, man. That's not a good sign. That last one that was on the crank, I think slapped it too. Captured him either way. I do have one. It was just four inches long. And then he went out to some brush piles and did the same thing, like mid water column. Just, oh, there's one. Same, same deal there, just suspended. Fat little dude. Yeah, see how they're chubby and got little bitty mouths? Chubby with little bitty mouths. I like it. Look at that. That's a purdy one. 
they are hefty. All these shad we've been seeing are suspended in the water column and been trying and trying and trying with the jig. Haven't been able to get bit. I think it's just because we we're going right past them. You got him? Hayden's hooked up. You just got the fish that I probably got bit. Oh, that's I'm probably why. A lot of times around these docks, you'll get those little nibbles and taps, this crappie and white bass. We ended up catching a few bass back in there, but what we're figuring out is that these fish are suspended because the shad are, they're all suspended like just a few feet down. So we were throwing a Texas rig and a jig. We haven't gotten any bites on that or just a couple bites because it's going like right past them. But with the crankbait and the spinnerbait, we can keep the bait in the strike zone longer. And it seems to be that's what they're looking at. I had one good fish on, hit my crankbait, ran under the boat and I lost it. But I think that's probably what we're gonna stick with or we're gonna build on is fish more baits that uh, can, can go in that suspended area like a chatterbait, and swim, swim bait, maybe a swim jig. Um, and then mess around with some crankbaits and stuff like that. That seems to be the deal right now. No, it's a largemouth. Thought it was a crappie. I think that one just came off the tee. He's still got, milk on his lip. He's still got a little milk on his lip there. Normally, I would say spinnerbait is not good during the middle of the day, but apparently they are eating it out here. Usually, something about rivers, they like it all day. That's a big bass there. Just had him on the spinnerbait. Dude, I'm telling you what, it is, oh my gosh. That kind of bite will make up for the day. My goodness. Look at that toad, baby. Dude, I was just sitting here, we were talking about, can't get them on the jig on the bottom. And I pick up the spinner bait, and I start just twitching it around the docks and I get that bruiser. Nice. Yeah, you smell good. You can tell that's a post-spawn fish too. Uh, if in doubt, break out the spinner bait. Oh my gosh. Well, he got angry at it. Oh gosh, that's a good one. On the spinner again. You mean net him and grab him for you? I think I can get him. He almost got me on that little pile back there. Ah, not that big. Come here. <sighs> here she blows. Dude, that spinner bait. It's just it's the deal. They're doing it. That that dock has got more brush on it than anyone we've seen. I'd imagine there might be another one. He almost got, he almost broke me off. He took me into that pile or that, that piling right away. That's gonna need a retie for sure. Oh, got him. Batty. Yeah, smells good. Okay, the microphone just fell off. It's always good. I think it's time to take it in now. The last little stretch right there. That was good. Finally figured out something. So uh, I'll show you guys what we were throwing and uh, how exactly we got our bites when we get in. I want to 
wanted to give you a little rundown of the pattern that was going on. So it was a very, very tough day. Me and Hayden decided to come out to the river for a little while. And we knew it was gonna be tough, but it was like mega, mega tough. And it took us a long time to figure out that that jig bite and Texas rig bite wasn't working. We were trying to make it work because uh, that's what we wanted to come thump them on, but it wasn't working out. So I finally, I got a good bite on a uh, crankbait on a dock and I figured out that the, the bass were suspended. They weren't on the bottom and uh, most of them were pretty close to the cover, you know, pretty typical of the bluebird day. And then the spinner bait, just, it was a winner. Uh, the spinner baits are always good on river systems. Typically, I would tell you guys that spinner baits aren't good on sunny days just because it's a lot of flash, but today, it was the deal. They were eating those shad that were also suspended just a few feet under the surface. So fishing around those those docks and wood um, and hitting those those uh, areas that had the bait fish coming through, that was the key. And you had to have a moving bait, crank bait or a spinner bait. So I think in total we had like six or seven fish. A couple of key fish there at the end of the day that were, uh, were really nice, kind of saved the day. But otherwise, it was it was really tough. Whenever we got out there, we were looking at our graphs and stuff, and we could see all the bait and all the fish were suspending right there. So all the signs were right in front of our face. We just really wanted to go catch them on some jigs and Texas rigs, flipping docks. So that's just one thing about fishing. Sometimes you can't always do what you want to do. You got to adapt and do what the fish want you to do. It's usually a really predictable pattern on rivers to go up there and flip that shallow wood and, and docks. Um, but we were, the bait was just going right past them to the bottom and they were just hovering suspended so you had to hit, hit them right in the middle. Now next week me and Hayden are going to be coming out here again and we're going to be going after some bigger critters. Yeah. Ones that have teeth. This, this river system we're fishing is not really known for bass fishing uh, but I've always wanted to fish it and Hayden fishes it a lot so uh, we knew there was some bass in here, but it's really known for those those big alligator gar, uh, really big catfish. So we're going to be coming out here next week and uh, going after the big boys or big girls, I should say. So follow us on the socials, links down below. Um, Hayden's out here quite a bit. So follow us on our quest to catch uh, the big gar next week. It should be fun and interesting. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in on this one. Hope you learned something. I certainly did today. It was a new learning experience. So always learn something. Always be trying to learn something when you go out fishing. Adapt, overcome, and catch them bass. We'll see you guys on the next one.